Okay, back to section 5.1. Um, we're looking at probabilities. And so main idea, right, we're doing frequency divided by total. So now this one's a little tricky. We're going to look at two dice. And we want to find um, the probability that the sum is 7 or that the sum is greater than 8. Um, so we're rolling two dice. So we, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, right? We have two of them. Um, and it's really hard to figure out how many pot combinations there are, right? Because we could have one and one, we could have one and two, one and three, right? Um, there's just so many options. So the easiest way is to make a table. So let's consider, I'm going to put the first dice on top. One, two, three, four, five. Um, it's die when it's singular. So die one. And then die two goes on the side. And this will be a really easy way to organize all the possible combinations of rolling a dice. So now we can get one and one, one and two, right? Two and three, you can see all the combinations. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and put the sum in the middle since both of these probabilities are looking for sum. So sum means adding them up. So if we roll a one and a one, we get a sum of two. A one and a two would be a sum of three. One and three would be a sum of four. So hopefully we see the pattern, um, right? Two plus two is four. Sorry, I was in the wrong spot. So three. So start filling it out. I've done this a lot, so I can do it really fast. So pause if you need to. Um, so I'll just pause and show you what I'm doing, right? Four plus four is Eight, right? Four plus five is nine, in case we still haven't caught on. All right. Six, seven, eight. And then the largest sum is 12 when you get a six and a six. Um, so you might see you could physically count all of these possibilities, or you notice it's six by six. So there's actually 36 total possibilities. Some of them are just repeats. Just like when we had the marbles, right? There was more than one white marble. So there were 884 options, not three. That's what's happening here as well. So there's 36 total possibilities. And the idea is there's just more than one way to get a seven. So to get seven, we could get a six and a one. We could get a five and a two, right? So there's six different ways to get seven out of 36 possibilities. So that's the probability of getting a seven. So there's six ways to get seven. That's my frequency for a sum of seven. And there's 36 total possibilities. And then if you did 36 divided by six, you get 0.1667. So that one's in blue. Let's do orange. And then greater than eight does not include eight. So that would be a sum of nine. That could also include 10, 11, or 12. So if we count that, we get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten 10 possibilities out of 36. And then 10 out of 36 gives me 0.2778. So for two dice, this is a good way to organize them, is making a table. And then how did I come up with six by six? Um, it's because there were six on each side. That's called the fundamental rule of counting. It states that if we have X simple outcomes for experiment one, so this would be experiment one, and we have Y simple outcomes for experiment two, that would be this one, then the total possibilities are x times y. So they don't have to both be the same number. We could have had a six-sided dice and a four-sided dice. But that's how I came up with six by six. Um, so the meaning of probability is really like the long-term relative frequency of an event. So if you have a coin, which I guess there's a coin shortage, but if you have one on you, um, flip it three times, right? Anything could happen. You could get heads a lot. Maybe in the beginning you get heads like three or four times. Um, anything can happen. But if you keep flipping that coin over and over and over and over, um, maybe up to 100 times, it's going to get really close to 50-50. 
in the long run is what we call that. Um, and this is how casinos get you, right? Because when you only gamble once or twice, anything could happen. You could get really lucky and win, but if you keep playing, right, they're going to win. Uh, and that's the idea. So anything can kind of happen in the beginning, but in the long run, it will be 50-50. All right, a few more definitions, and then we'll jump into example four. Um, a sample space, just words I might use later, is the collection of all outcomes. So the, the, why did I make an error? The sample space is essentially the total, everything. Um, an event is what we're interested in. So this could be one event, it could be a couple events, um, it's a collection of outcomes. It's any subset, right? Some smaller group of the sample space. So if we're looking at a dice, it could be rolling a one, but it could be rolling a one or a two, right? So any collection of outcomes. And the notation we use for an event is a single capital letter, if you want to, right? E, so we say probability of E. Um, so let's say my Venn diagram is my sample space. The whole box is my sample space. And then event E is called a subset. It's something within the sample space. So there's event E. Um, and then what would not E be? So we have the same sample space. The event not, when we did not blue, it was just every other color. So it'll be everything else in the sample space. Just a visual. All right, our final example for section 5.1, um, we're going to look at a deck of cards. So if you're not comfortable with a deck of cards, pause the video and either Google deck of cards or you can find one in section 5.1 of the textbook. I have a picture right here also. Um, if you're good with a deck of cards, then we're ready to go. If not, Google one really fast and just have one to reference. So we're gonna randomly select a card. So that's a nice visual of probability, right? Just drawing out of a, a deck, that's random chance. Um, so we're gonna do 52 total cards, so no um, jokers or anything. Um, and our first one will be event A. That's like our abbreviation that I talked about earlier. The event that the card is a jack of spades. So if you don't like using the letter A, we can rewrite it jack of spades. It's gonna be out of 52 for a total of 52. And then how do we figure out the jack of spades? So the first row is called hearts. This is called spades. The, this, these are the shapes on the cards. We have diamonds. Keeps doing that. Come on. There we go. Diamonds, and then the last one is clubs. And then the jack is the one with the J on it. So there's only one jack of spades and that's this one right here. So it'd be one out of 52. If you divide that really quickly, you get 0 0.0192. So only about a one to 2% chance, right? Slightly under two. It's a 1% chance, 1.92% uh, chance. But we'll leave it in decimal form. All right, so event B, what's the event that we just get a jack? So a jack would be any of the J's. One, two, three, four. So probability of a jack will be four out of 52, because there's four of them. So four out of 52, quick division brings me to zero, seven, six, nine. Cool, maybe. Um, the card is a spade. So spade would be this entire row. If you go ahead and count those, there's 13 out of 52, which is 0.25. It's the same as 1 fourth, because there's four shapes and it's one out of the four shapes. But in terms of the deck, there's 13 of them out of the whole 52. All right. Uh, let's do orange and then a face card. So I'm going to interpret a face card as any card with a face. So we have three, six, 
9, and 12. And then the deck still has 52. If you do division, you get 0 0.23076, so 08. I'm going to just stick with four decimal places. And then our final example for this section is not C, which would be not a spade. So it just means it can be hearts, diamonds, or clubs. It means it can be everything else. And I think if we add those all up, there's 39. So there's 13, 13, 13. It ends up being 39 out of 52. And if you divide, you'll get 0.75. Cool. So in the next section, there is a relationship between C and not C. So we'll see that later. But maybe you are already catching on to that. Uh, but I'll see you back for 5.2.